Dawson with Reynolds. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my best of 2022 video, my yearly video where I go over the best and worst of everything. Although it's more like favorite and least favorite because some of this stuff is obviously not some of it. All of it is my personal opinion. It's not sort of anything where I ran an algorithm to say these are the best and worst. Obviously I have toku show related and toy stuff to go over, some non-toku stuff, and I also kind of have some in-between categories that aren't necessarily a favorite, least favorite, best and worst. It's just kind of a random thing I wanted to mention. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the shows first. So my favorite toku of the year or toku of the year, obviously got four choices. I got the two right shows, the two Sentai shows since Senkaidra, I believe, uh, finished its airing at the beginning of this year, as well as Dino Fury. And I had to give it this year to Dom Brothers. I think it was the best overall quality for me. Runner-up Dino Fury, just because I really was happy with how much I enjoyed that. But Dom Brothers, I think, was easily the best for me. It was the one that engaged me the most. It was actually a breath of fresh air with Sentai. You know, it wasn't always perfect, but it was you know, the one that I dropped off and then came back and watched, and, you know, Ryder really fatigued me this year, even though I came back and checked out Geats a little bit, and I enjoyed what I was seeing, there's just, Ryder's formula in particular is really grinding on me, but Don Brothers at least had a lot of freshness, it was a good uh, balance of comedy and drama, like I said, it actually did feel unique from Sentai, I mean, obviously you have the, uh, the aesthetic differences, where it's a little bit unique with like the CGI characters and the way they do certain things, but just structurally, it's different than Sentai's been, especially in recent years, and it's been consistently, I think, the most engaging, too. So it's definitely the best one of the year for me. Now, for worst of the year, honestly, thinking about it, even though I did get fatigued of Ryder, I couldn't think of one to say, like, this is the worst, like, that I wouldn't feel right about saying worst. I could maybe say a least favorite, but even then. So rather than saying uh, a least favorite or a worst show specifically, I'm going to go for a worst practice that grinded on me, which is, like I mentioned, Ryder's formula, I think the grind of it and the repetitiveness of the Toku formula really wore on me more with Ryder. And so my worst of the year is actually just writer's formula and mainly in pertaining into them going form crazy. You know, but with Geats, it sort of made a little more sense starting to watch it because of the way the game works, but still, it's like, dude, they just, it's like, dude, they just crank these forms out. It's like nonsense. And then same thing with like Revice, you know, before I stopped watching it, and then I, I recently tried to start catching up a little bit when I was on a bit of a toku kick, and it's like, man, the, just the, the constant formula of the cranking out of the forms and having to sync it up with the toy schedule, it's like, nothing ever has time to breathe anymore. And I know that it's a franchise meant to sell toys, but I think there could be more of a balance there. And I just really feel like the forms have gone out of control. Like, it used to be, like, you know, mid-season beginning form, and then uh, final form. I don't know why I did that in that weird order of 2, 1, 3. Uh, but now it's like regular form, super form, super form 1, super form 2, super form Murphy. It's like, oh my god. And then they don't even let them breathe between episodes. Like, Toku already has too many episodes, and like, you can't even have one episode between when the first and the secondary rider get their ultimate forms. And so that's probably my worst thing. I wanted to say that instead of one show, because I don't think any of them deserve to be called worst shows. Now, I can't give any sort of, like, picks for best and worst toku movies because outside of maybe a Sentai special or something I watched, I stopped watching toku movies years ago, so that's not in here. Um, something I haven't done in a while is, like, best and worst characters. I used to do this more on when I was on the RR podcast, but I decided to go for it this year and do a favorite and least favorite toku character. Now, I honestly couldn't think of a favorite toku character of the year that was like, oh my god, I love this character so much, I can't wait to talk about it. But I did find one that I think is probably my overall favorite for some interesting reasons, which is uh, Inui Brother from Dom Brothers. I mean, for the most part, I actually wound up liking him the most out of the core characters. The thing about Don Brothers is I like most of the characters, but some of them don't necessarily stand out. I thought it was going to be Kiji Brother, and I do have something to talk about with him in a minute, but he took a turn. But I think as, over the course of the series, I was most invested in Inui Brother's story. I think as he and Kiji Brother had sort of parallel things to react to, he reacted in the most healthy way. I found myself rooting for him the most. Not to mention, I love his suit, and I feel that it's funny to me that the classic sort of badass Black Ranger character is in this funny, like, chibi Sonic-looking suit. And in a way, it kind of represents all things Toku can be to me at some times, which is both awesome and stupid at the same time. And so the combination of the fact that I love his character and I just love the suit and how it's all kind of this weird mix of cool and stupid and kind of like adorable at the same time is probably the thing that I enjoyed most. Again, it's not like, a, oh my god, I love this character, I gotta mention it. But it was the one I decided to land on. 
Now, before I get to least favorite or worst, then the WTF character of the year is Kiji Brother. Now, this originally, I think, probably would have been my favorite character of the year. Now, not that I dislike his character. He probably still is one of my more favorite characters this year, certainly one of the most, most, the most interesting. Um, but, like, at the beginning, I really liked his character because I felt he was really relatable and down to earth, being this kind of just everyman character that was kind of down on himself and just really appreciated the small things in his life. He was really relatable, not to mention it was really cool to finally get a male Pink Ranger. But then he took a really weird, obsessive turn, which, again, it makes him a good character. I think I just like Black Ranger more because just like I, don't like, I literally just like him more, but Kiji Brother... He's still a good character, and I still like him, but I think it's the weird turn that made him not my favorite, but he's also still interesting. I want to make that clear. I still think he's, like, top five because he's interesting, and it's really cool and unexpected that he became so weird and interesting and also borderline almost a villain sometimes, but it's definitely, like, a WTF. Like, that character took a turn I was not expecting. I honestly thought the story was going to boil down to, like, you know, why would she choose someone boring like me when she can have this cool danger guy, and then it just turned into, <laughs> oh, look, it's my wife. Anyway. As for worst or least favorite Toku character of the year, it's Donder Goku. Now, first of all, though, I love the suit, both versions. I'm sick to death of how boring and uncreative Sentai is in regards to their six rangers being constant gold and sixth. But every year, the costume wins me over. This is no exception. Easily one of my favorites. And there has been times I've liked his character. I like concepts about his character. He's had some endearing moments. But for the most part, he's been a letdown on multiple fronts. I mean, first of all, he's hardly in the show. Like, after his debut, it feels like he's very rarely there. Usually only showing up to do the finishing move with uh, Dom Bro Dom Momotaro in his gold mode. It almost feels like like the writers didn't want to do another character, but they had to because they needed the Six Ranger in his merchandise. Not to mention, I just, I'm, I'm tired of the Six Rangers being a caricature. In my opinion, not every year, but for most years in the recent history, the Six Rangers always come across as like a caricature, almost like a, one of the male companions in Pokemon, where their whole character boils down to, the future is now thanks to science, like it's just a catchphrase. And so, like, he does have a character arc and traits, but I feel that the sort of caricature cartooniness overrides all that. And his main character just being kind of like, oh, I want attention and I want to be liked, it becomes, he's not like a cool badass character. I want a cool badass Six Ranger again, and it's kind of like a cartoon. And then he does have the badass Silver side, which I think, oh, that's really cool. You know, you kind of got the best of both worlds. And credit to the actor. Um, he does a good job of playing both kind of the pathetic twerpy gold and then the more badass uh, silver, which kind of in a way reminds me of Zenkaiser Black, which is like, um, you know, getting to see the actor play both the goofy loudmouth protagonist and a cool like stoic protagonist. So credit to the actor for that. But both sides, in my opinion, wind up being cartoony caricatures that compared to the rest of the cast, even though the show can be very animated and cartoony, they feel like... Uh, cartoons. And I'm just not a fan of the Six Rangers feeling like cartoons, not to mention how little he's in the show, and I feel it falls uh, by the wayside. And just a real quick honorable mention, I do want to say, it uh, reminded me when I talked about it, is I really do like Zenkaiser Black. I really like the suit, I like his cold vibe and the mystery of him, and again, really credit to Kaito's actor for being able to play effectively both types of Sentai protagonist, where you have, like, the eccentric character and then the more stoic badass, with funny moments still. Like, he did a really good job at that, and I've enjoyed his presence so far. And I've, I like that they have restraint with it, but I almost wish we would have seen more of him. All right, now let's move on to toys for best and worst. I'm going to have sort of a tie for my two favorite Power Rangers toys. One is lightning-related, um, more so broadly lightning, like uh, roleplay, and the other is mainline-related. So for lightning, uh, broad purposes pick is actually the Power Lance. I just liked this more than I thought I would. I, I just wasn't that excited for it because I, just, I don't know, I just wasn't. Even though I probably should have been because it's one of the few we actually don't already have a counterpart from Bandai from. But when I got it, I just liked it so much more than I thought. It looks really cool. There's all kinds of ways to display it. It feels the most hefty when you're able to actually extend it to the Lance mode. I like the way that the edge lights up. It was just overall a much cooler toy than I thought it was going to be and I was really happy with it. As far as then basic toys, I want to go with the Megazords. They're still not perfect, but I really think that the Dino Fury Megazords were a step up from uh, Beast Morphers, and they're really showing that they're going in the right direction. Some of the most accurate to the way they look in the show. Um, they just are really awesome, and I really enjoyed them a lot. I do want to give an honorable mention to the Dino Night Morpher, because I think it's really cool. It really started off the year um, in a really cool way. I love the way it plays uh, different music from the show. It's almost like this all-perfect toy for both 
both the adult collectors and the kids because I think the functionality of it's a lot of fun for kids but stuff like playing the morphing jingles and other jingles is kind of an almost pseudo complete selection thing and I just really dug it. The only reason it didn't make it as the number one pick is because it is a little bit buggy which can be kind of annoying and sometimes like the keys won't read and it'll glitch out and it's a little bit imperfect there uh, with that if I wanted to mention that. As far as worst Power Rangers toy this year. I couldn't really think of one that was like outright like, oh, this is necessarily awful. Like there's some things like the sword from the Megazord bow that I don't think were that great, but nothing that was like the worst because it's kind of like the same quality you'd expect. So instead I decided to highlight two things real quick, which is biggest disappointment for me was the Zap release. I feel like sometimes when I talk about it, I'm a little bit overly harsh on it and I'm not trying to be because I don't think it's necessarily awful. I think it looks pretty awesome and there's a lot of cool work put into it. But I feel that after all the time we spent waiting for it and how expensive it is, it just feels way cheaper than I thought it was going to. And I know it's like a different quality difference and that was a weird way of putting that, but I, but I know like some of the reasons why and I understand people's arguments for it. I'm not saying again that it's awful, I'm just saying I feel that for that price, it should have felt a little bit better, in my opinion. Like it shouldn't feel so cheap for 160 bucks, and I'm just, I'm hoping it improves. And again, I'm not saying it's awful, there's things I like about it, I'm just saying it was probably my biggest disappointment, but not like in an overly upset way. And the only other thing was, is I would say kind of a worse practice, is I, I do kind of hate how uh, some of the Dino Fury basic figures wound up coming out. This kind of stretches over two years, but it really bothers me that you have to buy the Amazon 5-pack to get all five main rangers, and that the green and black ranger releases that they had, that they made sound like were gonna be the basic releases, for people that didn't want to get the five pack were the just armored on figures. And then as far as a really quick, um, sort of not honorable mention, but pick I just happened to think about, which is like favorite lightning figure. Honestly, they come out so frequently now that I kind of forget which ones release in the year. But if I'm thinking about it, honestly, my one of my favorite things, at least this year, was the Turtles release figures. I really like those designs. I really like getting anything from the comics. And they weren't perfect, but they were overall pretty cool looking figures. And some of my favorite I got this year to put on display. So that's probably my favorite in that realm. As far as Sentai, for me, my favorite Sentai toy this year, I mean, I did like stuff like the, uh, the Memorial Mobile Pirates, but I have to give it to Don Oni Taijin. It wasn't perfect. I was critical on some things in regards to the quality and look, but it was still a really cool mecha, and it was really cool to move, for Sentai to also move into this realm of getting articulated mecha that both offer more, you know, posable stuff, but also that look more accurate to the show because of it. And not to mention it's a more impressive size. It was just a really cool step in the right direction. Also, not to mention as well that I really do like the designs of the Don Brothers mecha. I like gold, I think, a little bit more, but Don Oni Taijin, I think, was a little bit more versatile in terms of the movement, so I had to give it to that. As far as worst Sentai toy of the year, in one, it's also not something I'm overly, like, mad at, like, oh, this is the worst thing ever, I want to burn it or something. It's more, like, just worst, like, I didn't like it. I would say is the, the gimmick figures in regards to the, like, mini Sentai Robos, you know, the Tokyo-based ones combining the Avataro form, not the Avataro form, but the, uh, what are those called? I forget what they're called, the little mini robot forms. Uh, it's, the name's escaping me at the moment, but you know what I mean when they transform into the little altar forms. There we go. And then you have stuff like the Ryu Soldier one, the Tokyo one. Now, design-wise, some of design wine, <laughs> design wine. Design wise, some of them are pretty cool. Like, I dig the Ryu Soldier one. Other ones just feel a little bit strange and lazy. But my main problem with them is just how brittle the figures feel. Like, the figures overall aren't bad-looking, especially the regular the robot forms, but when dealing with them and transforming, they just felt so cheap, and I know they're on the cheaper end, but like truly, like, falling apart, like there was a couple reviews I was trying to film of some backlog that I just wound up stopping because I got so frustrated them constantly falling off when I just looked at them. Like, they weren't the most fun to collect or my favorite design-wise, but they were some of the cheapest feeling Sentai toys I've bought in a while, and I was just really frustrated with them. Um, I can't really give any picks for Rider toys, best or worst, or anything like that because I haven't collected Rider stuff um, in a couple years outside of, you know, the occasional backlog figure art of figures I want. So there's not really going to be anything uh, mentioning there. I also really couldn't think of a best and worst comic. I've been pretty bad at keeping up with a lot of comics that are non-PR related. And though I've enjoyed the Power Rangers comics this year, there wasn't anything that necessarily stood out to me as a best thing or even worst. I would say the most, like, mid-range weird disappointment was Power Rangers Universe. I hesitated, hesitated to even bring that up because I actually wound up liking the lore it introduced, but it definitely was a lot stranger than I thought it was going to be, and I think it could have been a lot better, so that would be kind of 
the only thing I felt worth mentioning on any sort of like worst category or anything like that. As far as basic just sort of non-toku related picks goes, you know, my favorite movie this year is also kind of a basic bench pick was The Batman. I just, I really did like that movie a lot. My favorite comic book movie, my favorite movie this year in general, like not only was it great, but it was kind of like a special movie. You know, I wasn't resistant to it because of Robert Pattinson or anything like that, but I was resistant to it when it was first announced because I wanted to see more Batflick. I liked the idea of an older Batman. I think we had already done younger Batman. But then from the minute the promotional material like started coming out for the Batman, from the images to the trailer, something about it just drew me in. Like I was really intrigued by it and it wound up, you know, living up to my expectations and more. I really liked that movie a lot. I'm trying to think of shows this year, I honestly had a hard time thinking of favorite and new shows, but I will say favorite returning show uh, was definitely Better Call Saul's final season. It was an excellent final season and final like just episode in general really uh, one of the most satisfying finales ever um, I really honestly personally did like Kenobi I know it wasn't perfect but I think people way over blew some of the complaints about it and for me the the positives outweighed the negatives especially in regards to seeing Obi-Wan and Anakin interact again as a prequel kid and all that um, as far as game of the year probably a weird choice because I almost wanted to give it to God of War I also really did enjoy some time with Elden Ring uh, but I wanted to give it to Legends Arceus now, uh, you know, both this and Scarlet and Violet are known for having uh, technical problems, to say the least, and both games are still fun despite it. I found far less problems with this technologically, technologically, but technically, like, I think the worst I had was just some pop-in. Like, I definitely experienced some funny issues with Scarlet and Violet, but with this one, like, the worst I had was, like, a tree would pop in, like, no big deal. But I just liked this game a little bit more, even though Scarlet and Violet's a little bit more expansive. Uh, I loved the region in this. The old vibe of the past was really interesting. The Hisuian forms, uh, the catching of Pokemon. It was just something different and a breath of fresh air, and I just enjoyed it a little bit more. It was probably my favorite gaming experience this year, even though I haven't played as many games as I would have liked to. Just as a random, like, category that's not necessarily tied to anything specifically is kind of the biggest surprise of this year in regards to anything Toku related was definitely the announcement of Cosmic Fury. You know, there was a ton of speculation uh, throughout the last couple years of what would come next, you know, between the rumors of us stopping Sentai, you know, the fact that we know there's going to be a reboot, but we don't know when it's happening. You know, there was rumors about Juoja at one point, there was rumors about Q-Ranger, there was even the high-speed rumors about Kara Major, uh, there was the anniversary rumors, and like some form of it wound up being true, uh, but I didn't exactly see what happened coming, you know, with sort of of new original versions of the Ryu Soldier suits with the Q-Ranger uh, mecha for a 10-episode series, sort of bridging it in between. And we still don't know how many more surprises we might get, but I think that was definitely the biggest surprise of the year, just because it was kind of like a combination of uh, some of the rumors wound up being true, but also stuff we didn't exactly expect. So I had to highlight that in my sort of year review. But honestly, I think that's about it for my best and worst of this year. I couldn't think of too much else that was worth noting. Uh, you know, it was a pretty interesting year all around. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens next year. But let me know what your guys' favorite and least favorite things of the year were, both Toku and non-Toku related, if you feel like it. I hope you guys have a good New Year's and a good start to the next year. Uh, thanks for everyone for sticking around with me for another year of nonsense. Hopefully, some of you stick around for another year of more. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb a steps and ring that bell. See you notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.